Hey, I know you love Chrome DevTools. I love it too. They've been elevating the game for years and it's such a satisfying way of debugging web applications, especially coming from 10, 15, 20 years ago where you were just, you had alerts and maybe Firebug. But did you know that there is an entire protocol that allows you to programmatically access the internals of dev tools in order to, to exploit them for your own purposes? Well, if you didn't, that's good because that's why we're here. So buckle up, let's go. Chrome DevTools Protocol is a, a set of APIs that you can access that allow you to poke at the internals of the DevTools. Chrome's DevTools itself use it, and a lot of other tools use it. I would guess probably Lighthouse uses it. You can check out the documentation at chromedevtools.github.io slash devtools-protocol. You can see that the protocol is separated into all these different domains on the left. Some of them probably look familiar if you're familiar with the DevTools. So you have console, cache storage, debugger, uh, the DOM and a bunch of other DOMy things. Uh, network, performance, runtime, profiler, all these things that you probably use on a daily basis, you can use at a deeper level programmatically with the Chrome DevTools protocol. What we're gonna do in this video is show how you can intercept responses before they get processed by Chrome. I'm gonna be using Puppeteer with our scripts. You don't need to use Puppeteer. You don't even need to use library. You can interface with this directly by hand with, with uh, network tools. But I'm gonna use Puppeteer because the stuff that I'm doing with the Chrome DevTools protocol usually requires me to automate the browser in some way. So it's easier for me to just get started with Puppeteer and go from there. So I've already got a script written and we can check out and see how everything is wired together. So here we're just launching the browser with a few settings that I find useful over and over and over again but you do you. Here we're getting the page that uh, automatically loads up when you open the browser. So we're querying the open pages in the browser and we're getting the first page. Now the next one is uh, actually doing something with the Chrome DevTools protocol. So here with the, the page that we have opened, we want to open a CDP session so that we can start to interact with the DevTools protocol. Everything is of course asynchronous uh, and is handled via promises. So we're using await everywhere. A lot of the domains require that you enable them in order to access them. I haven't actually seen this to be important with the network domain. Nevertheless, they say it's required. It doesn't bother me that it's in there. It might be something that is really required in the future. I'm throwing it in there right now. The next thing you need to do here is to set a request interception pattern. This tells Chrome's DevTools protocol which URLs you want to intercept and react to. So here you can see that we need a URL pattern, which is just a glob-like string, a resource type, and an interception stage. Resource type are things like scripts uh, or script, document, image, the things that you see in the Chrome DevTools protocol network panel. Interception stage is an interesting one. You can intercept at two stages, the request stage, or when we've received the headers, the headers received stage. If you're just looking at augmenting requests going out and you don't care about the response coming in, you can intercept at the request stage, modify the request, track the request, block the request, however you want, and not worry about anything else. If you want to have the response body accessible and the response header is accessible, then you need to wait until the request is sent out and we've started to receive the response and then you can intercept and do what you need to do. Since we're intercepting responses, we're going to intercept at the headers received stage so that we can get access to that body. Now we need to listen for events. Here we're waiting for the network.request intercepted event. And for the event object in the handler, we're taking out the interception ID and request. All we're doing right now is logging that we have intercepted something with the interception ID. Then we are sending another command over the Chrome DevTools protocol to continue the intercepted request. If we don't continue the request, then Chrome is just gonna continue waiting for it. It's going to hang, eventually time out. It'll throw an error right here because we're not catching this. Um, so if we want to make sure that Chrome operates as expected, we need to continue those requests. To continue those requests, uh, the only thing we really absolutely have to have at the start is the interception ID. When we launch our script, Chromium launches and uh, nothing really happens. DevTools is open because of the launch parameters we sent to Puppeteer. But now when we go to, let's say, uh, what's a good site? Where do you want to go today? Netflix.com. 
go back to our console and we see that we've intercepted a whole bunch of JavaScript. The page is still loaded fine because we've continued those interceptions and uh, the, the page was able to access the resources that it wanted, but we did intercept them. So now that we've intercepted something, what can we do? We can do anything. We can rewrite the whole page. We can rewrite the documents. We can re rewrite the scripts. We can we can process the images. We can, re we can rewrite the CSS. There's so much we can do. Have you ever had issues with the Chrome DevTools Pretty Print functionality? I'm not sure if it's just me and the way I'm abusing Chrome uh, or the way the sites are configured or something along those lines, but it's not entirely uncommon that Chrome just pukes out when I'm trying to format a large file or set breakpoints or, or do some weird stuff with the source. So what I've found is uh, an easy workaround is to just take ownership of the formatting of scripts that I want to look into. Uh, luckily, there's an awesome tool out there called Prettier that we can just run all of our scripts through and then bam, they're going to be beautiful in the Chrome DevTools uh, source window. This means that Chrome doesn't need to do any mapping between the original source and the formatted source for when you, you're dealing with breakpoints or whatever else. Here we have some slight modifications to our original script. Down here, you'll notice we have a lot of additional logic in our request interception. Now that we actually wanna do something with the body, we need to get the body itself. To get the response body, we need to send a command over the Chrome DevTools protocol that'll give us the response body. Here it's just network.getResponseBody for interception and we pass it the interception ID and then we'll eventually get the response back. The reason why it does not come automatically is because uh, the response might be large. We might not know whether or not we need it. So we check out the headers and then if we really want the response, then we ask Chrome DevTools protocol, hey, please give me the response. Since we're going to be modifying the response, we're also probably going to need to manage our own headers because the headers that were originally passed down might not be appropriate for the response that we're generating. At the very least, we're really not gonna want it to cache and, and the, the content length is gonna be different. Uh, we could reuse a lot of headers, but it's probably easier to just create our own. To get the body data out, the response needs to be decoded. The response object comes back with a Boolean base64 encoded property. I've never seen that not be true. So as far as I'm concerned, you always need to decode the response uh, with a base64 library. I have it accounting for that Boolean here because I don't know what's gonna come down the line. Now that we have our body data, we can pass that through to Prettier. And now we have our formatted JavaScript in this new body variable. We're almost there. Next, we actually need to create our headers, which I gave you a little preview about earlier. The only thing additional that I'm doing right here is to uh, make sure that the content length is the actual uh, length of the new JavaScript that we generated. Now to continue along with that interception, uh, we still need to pass the interception ID, but now we also need to pass the raw response. And by raw response, I mean the actual entire HTTP response. So that means the uh, status code, a status message, uh, the proper line terminators and separators, uh, the new headers that we've just created in a proper HTTP response format. And then finally, uh, the body that we are uh, sending along. And all of this needs to be encoded back into base64. Now that we've done that, let's check out our script. Netflix.com. It's a little bit slower, certainly, because we're doing a lot of additional processing. We could add a cache so that subsequent requests uh, use that cache so we don't have to continually do that processing. I'll leave that as an exercise to the viewer because I'm not sure how you're using this. Now let's check out our source. Here we go. Look at this beautiful script that doesn't need to be prettified at all. It is beautiful just the way it is. So now we've formatted that script, but what we've actually done is just completely rewrite it on the fly. Now, if we're rewriting scripts, we can do so much more. We can inject our own code in there. We can uh, transform it in a way that gives us additional power with the application we're running. Uh, for Netflix, we could rewrite the code in order to make sure that it stops auto-playing those stupid previews. So this is just a taste of what is possible with Chrome DevTools protocol. I'm gonna be jumping into a few other things later in the line. If you like this stuff, then please uh, subscribe, like, hit the notification bell so that you're alerted next time I pop one of these up. And uh, we'll, we'll see each other again next time. Thanks.